Hello, 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 and welcome to this live today. You have joined U point, U point O when you have outgrown the previous version of yourself. This is going to be a behind the scenes of what it looks like, what actually happens when you decide to reinvent yourself. So if you are here live, we would love to see that you are here. Please say hi in the chat. We'd love to know who's joining us live today. And just so you know, there will be a replay available. And also there's gonna be lots of really gold nuggets here. So grab a pen and paper. Okay, this is perfect for you. If you have had this nudge, this feeling, something inside of you that says, I am meant for more. You're not fulfilling your full potential and you just have this feeling deep inside of you. So you know you need to do something different, but you might be scared, you might be unsure of what to do. Well, here today we are gonna share lots of tips and tricks, things we have all learned. So how is this gonna go today? Okay, so as you can see on your screen, there are five of us here today. Now, all five of us have reinvented ourselves in some way. Now, what's really amazing about the five of us is we are from all different ends of the earth. We have all different stories, all different backgrounds, you name it. I think you'll be able to resonate with each one of us on some level. The one thing we have in common, well, there's many things we have in common, but the one thing that really stands out is we have all reinvented ourselves. So we're here today to share some of the things that we have learned along the way. So how this is going to go is the first thing that's going to happen is we are each going to share a really brief summary of what our reinvention looked like. So what was our life like before? What was that moment where we said, like, we're done with our old life? Like, something has to change. What was the last drop? Because there usually is a moment. There's a buildup for a long period of time when we know something's not right but there's usually this like moment in time when we go okay i'm done i'm over and then what is life like now because that's what can be so confusing and can feel so nebulous when you're in this place it's like well i know what i know now but what's it going to be like in the future so we're going to share what life is like now then we're going to have a bit of a conversation about some of the common themes that all of us have experienced while we went through this and very last, this is the end of the hour. This is going to be an hour live today. Stay tuned for the last bit because we're having what I'm calling rapid fire tips. And each lady is going to share in 60 seconds or less, what is like the one, one thing they wish they knew when they went into this? What is the one thing that would have been a game changer for them? I actually have goosebumps as I say that. So before we start the round table, which is the format that's going to be here, I'm gonna quickly introduce myself. And each of these ladies is actually gonna introduce themselves as they share a bit of their story. But if we haven't met yet, I'm so happy you're here. And we're, we're all so happy that you're here. And this is very much a collaboration. All of us really felt passionate about being here today. So my name is Andrea Horvath and I am a career transition coach. And I help ambitious women figure out and land the career that has their name written all over it. So before I hand this over to the ladies for them to share their stories, I want to first say, like, why are we having this conversation? Why are we having it now? Which is really important, and it's an important conversation to be having. We are at the point in our history where we are in the midst of a massive evolution. I mean, if you look back through history, there's always these time periods that we've gone through where humanity has changed, and we're smack dab in the middle of one right now. And we all know that on some level. It started about three and a half years ago, right? And so in this time, so many people have been evaluating their life, deciding what works, what doesn't. We were all told success looks like X, Y, Z, a title, uh, prestige, you know, looking like you have it together, all these things. And so many of us have realized that that's actually not it. And so we're searching for something new, figuring out, well, what do I do instead? Many are going through a spiritual awakening, even if they don't even realize it yet, because you don't usually realize it when you're in the midst of it. But there's so many, so many people who are going through this. And one of my missions truly is to highlight and feature 
women who have gone through this or are going through this because we need more example. And I know I can speak for all these ladies here. Our mission here is for you to leave this live inspired, empowered, motivated to take action. So you can see there's other women out there who are doing it as well. We don't have to do this alone. I know I did this alone in many ways, but my mission, and like I said, I can speak for these ladies here and really, really truthfully is for you to feel inspired to take action. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to these ladies. And what they're going to do, like I said, is share those three bits of information. First, they will introduce themselves, tell you where they're all from in this world, which is amazing because we're so many different places. And uh, yeah, we'll go through through everybody one at a time. So Anya, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Andrea. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anya Zibert, and I come from Slovenia. That's a tiny country between Austria and Italy. If, uh, you know, there are some maps that Slovenia doesn't exist <laughs> because, uh, but it's a very beautiful country. So you should check it out. So where was your like life before, Anya? Okay. Um, yeah, basically it started, I think it started way, way before, I, I think, you know, because um, uh, my like official start, it was 2017 when I was working as a headhunter in a recruitment agency. And um, I was already going through some changes, uh, but especially when I got myself involved in this world of recruitment and employment and, you know, like witnessing all these people with very, very low self-esteem and self-worth. And uh, just that time, you know, I was uh, actually starting to work on myself. So I, I, I started attending workshops and I attended one with a very, very special session, which was past life regression. And uh, after that, everything changed. I think that was my breaking point because I could, I could see things differently. Like my life got completely different perspective. And um, yeah, like to make it short, basically, I saw everything from energetic point of view. And I saw this bigger picture and I felt, you know, like what other people are feeling. And I saw that it could be done differently. But of course, after I finished this job, I, I resigned this job after two years or something like that. Then, you know, I found myself in another adventures and then Corona started in like 2020. So after three years, I actually came to the point, you know, I was like, oh my God, I have to open my own company. After everything changed and i finished with my relationship um i lost my last job because of corona of course so basically i was rock bottom i was rock bottom i was like there's nothing there's no one that can help me there's nothing that i can do i cannot depend on anyone in my life except on myself so i was like what can i do you know and um then, yeah, I, I, I just started with small steps, very, very small steps. But it's very, very cool that you mentioned spiritual awakening because this is exactly what it is. It's um, coming, you know, into contact with the spiritual side of yourself. And what was really interesting in my story, because, of course, I was attending workshops, I was, you know, reading books, I was listening to podcasts, and I was like, yeah, just you have to stand up for yourself, and everything is going to be fine. But the first time when I stand, stood up for myself, everything collapsed. <laughs> so, you know, it was a very interesting experience. I was like, are you for kidding me you know <laughs> i did everything i supposed to and i lost absolutely everything what i had like seriously my life my relationship house money <laughs> everything and then i learned the hard way <laughs> that it's not it's not that simple but in a way it is like when you really really become authentic self then you can start creating so now i'm helping people to be like real authentic version of themselves um, to create their own career, you know, and to, yeah, life and empower HR people in, in companies. So, um, 
it's a story. I think that each and every one of us, you know, could could probably make a movie out of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would I definitely that that what I learned, you know, that even if I started doing like step by step, I did all the right things, but everything collapsed because it needed to collapse because my old needed to die. My old self, my old Anya needed to die. So a new one could be born. So That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And that is actually, I think something probably we could all can relate to. It's like when things are falling apart, it's a sign they're meant to fall apart, which can be really hard to be in that space. But life is saying, you don't fit that anymore. You don't fit that anymore. And we're actually doing you a favor by removing it. Doesn't feel like it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really, all quiet. That's, it, yeah, exactly. We're all, they're all nodding their heads. This is something that's a universal theme is, is we know now looking back, we can see it was happening for us, but at the time it's not okay always the easiest. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Anya. Dana, take her away. Yeah. Firstly, my name is Dana Sardano and um, I am in Stewart, Florida, uh, sidestepping hurricanes left and right. And uh, so I'm listening to you, Anya. And again, we're all, there's going to be a common thread, you know, within all of our stories, but uh, I'm a career educator. I was in education for about 25 years and was happy there. It was not like my lifelong dream. You know, I always had like artistic tendencies, but that's what I did and I enjoyed doing it. And so when you ask, or when the obvious question is like, where was your pivot? Like, where was your shift? Mine came in like a, like mini pivots. So again, happy in my career. I had um, two. Uh, I had two daughters. I had two children. Later in life, I had them at thirty eight and thirty nine. So in like from like two thousand nine to two thousand eleven, I was like making babies, but still the career woman. And something changed in me after that. Anybody who's become a mother understands that you just see the world a little bit differently. And I so my parenting, you know, my parents parenting a little bit differently. Like a lot of things started to shift for me, but still happy in my job doing my thing. Somewhere around the 2012 mark, things started shifting. I I used to be a bit of um, uh, I was a bit of the golden child in the school that I worked in. I worked in a private Orthodox Jewish high school. I was the the non-Jewish woman there who had a, like a different perspective, and I was somewhat revered. And uh, revered maybe isn't the right word, but respected. They liked me. That was all right, right? But they changed the head of school, and I was no longer as charming as I thought I was. And his philosophy on education was different than mine. I've always had to fight for the kids and fight for the rights and, you know, fight for everybody to do everything because of the nature of who I was before I evolved and became so enlightened. But uh, when the new head of school came in, things started to shift. So now I had children. I understood what really mattered to me. I then went through, again, my own little spiritual awakening, not even realizing what it was, forgave my father after being estranged for like 25 years. And that changed. My husband stepped in, that changed. And my job started getting harder and harder. So all these things started getting good and, and everything else, the, the spotlight was very clear on where I was because I was no longer this person still trying to, to operate in this environment. So dun, dun, dun. I wind up getting rheumatoid arthritis. Things were getting even harder. So the signs were there. And that's why I'm telling the story this way. The signs were there. It was like, okay, this is important. This is not. This is easy. This is not. Now you have RA and it gets more challenging. Then I figured out I could paint. And I was like, ooh, now I found something that I like to do. So now I really hate this, right? So this went on. So this went on from 2012 to about 2015. I was like, ooh, becoming uncomfortable in my job, but ignoring it because this is what I did. So in the spring of 2016, I remember sitting in my office, part of my job I was a director of student development. And part of my job was to discipline kids. Like I wore the hat, like the, the sort of Dean of students hat and the, you know, working with kids with learning disabilities hat, mentoring, whatever, lots of hats. And I'm in my office with, with a colleague of mine and he's talking about how he hates his job and how he's going to leave. And I said these words to him, where am I going? I've kind of maxed out in this career. Where am I going? I'm probably going to die in this chair. Well, <laughs> a few days later, I had an incident with some students in my office. Same colleague was in there because he brought him in. 
again, private school, money talks, you know what I mean? We're not championing the cause of the children. We're championing the cause of the person who's got their name on the library. And I mouthed off to the kids. And I knew in that moment what I was doing. It was like this, this internal sabotage. Am I allowed to say we're live? Can I say what I said? I'm going to say it. No one's stopping me. So the kids were doing their thing. I disciplined them. I dealt with the thing. The colleague was in the room. And I had this moment that I thought these words, why don't you two get your heads out of your asses and get it together? And I said that to myself, oh, you can't say that. And then I said it. But when I said it, there was like, it was an intentional sabotage. And then that made things really difficult for me. And so shit, the doo-doo hit the fan. <laughs> I'm trying to watch my language. The doo-doo hit the fan, head of school who was not my biggest fan, it, whatever, it went south. I had the choice then to leave and didn't take it because out of respect for my husband, he was worried about money. So I went in the following school year, the 2016, 2017 school year. And I was like, listen, I'm leaving after this year. You've got me for the year. And then I go. And again, I share this with you as well, because it was probably one of the worst years of my life because I had already decided I was out and I stayed. I was like, I would joke. I was like throwing up in my mouth every day on my way to work. You know what I mean? It was, it was horrendous. But again, when we make these decisions to leave, we have to consider our children. We have to consider our spouses. We have to consider the people around us. I couldn't just jump ship a six figure job to, you know, to be a painter, to be an artist, you know, and it was very, very difficult, but I did what I had to do. I, I put my ducks in a row. I played chess rather than checkers. And I found myself here. I'm going to spare you all the details because I know my time is up, but I'm going to spare you all the details of what it, of how I got from that moment in 2016 to now. But let me just tell you something. When you make the decision and you stick to it and, and with conviction and you and you um, find your people and you you commit to yourself. Oh, my God. I don't even have words to what it looks like now versus what it looked like then. It's scary. Anya said it perfectly. When you make that jump and you do all the things and all of a sudden your life falls apart. But you have to raise it to the ground before you can build it up. And when you build it up, there's nothing like it. So. Thank you for uh thank for you listening. so much. Thank you, Dana. And there's so much gold in there when you talk about, you know, you sabotage. And that is what happens is we we very subtly start sabotaging ourselves and we don't even see it necessarily at the time. And then something happens, like we get fired or we lose our job, and we're like, well, how'd that happen? Not even seeing what we've been really doing behind the scenes the whole time. Yeah. And hindsight is wonderful. Like yeah. I'm so you, smart now, but that yeah. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and, and you know what? And it's so true. I talk to so many women who think, like you think, well, we're, we think we think we're we're faking it. We think people can't tell. It starts to come out because when you're yeah. unhappy doing something and you're not fulfilled, you're not feeling joy. People can tell, and it yeah. eventually, unfortunately, or fortunately, catches up with you. And I mean, what you've created now. I mean, Dana cut her her story short, but she created an art studio. I mean, how many of us are told that we can't make money doing art and look at behind her. I mean, the woman is just incredibly talented <laughs> and a force to be reckoned with. Right. But how many times are we told that we can't make money doing something? And if we believe those stories, guess what? You won't. And you chose not to believe it. You just that way. Who are you? Who on you? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to do it anyways. 100%, right. right? Because That's there's right. always going to be somebody telling you you can't do it. Like, shit, there's going to be tons of people who are telling you you can't do it, right? So thank you so much. Josephine, you're up there. Yeah, though. hi, everyone. I, first, I want to recognize everyone who's in the chat. We do see you guys, but I think it's a little bit, we are so into this. This is the first time that we're doing this live together. So please keep the chat going. We do see that we will pick up more on that. So before I before I start, I see we have people from India and all over the world. So if you could keep the thing, the chat going, add your questions to the chat because then we will be able to pick up on that a little bit later on too. I just wanted to recognize that before. So my name is Justin Warner. I am from Sweden originally, but I live in Switzerland. So same same continent as Anja is is living on, and I think. Um, Dana actually said it. She said, you need to find your tribe. You need to find your people. And today with today's possibilities, 
we all found people all over the world. I mean, Andrea, Dana and Angela are in the US and Anja and I, we are in Europe. And when I had my wake up call, because I think that is also one of the pieces that are really close, that connect all of us, I thought, who am I to dare doing these things? And I don't have a story and I don't know the right people. But once you dare to take steps outside of your comfort zone, once you dare to really take one tiny step after the other, so many new opportunities will open up. So my wake up call came in 2019. I learned the hard way within six weeks that my father got incurable cancer and passed away. Two weeks before he passed away, I handed in my resignation. I was a senior executive at Switzerland's largest bank and I was like, this can't be it. I need to do something else. I had been the good girl for over 20 years, doing things that I thought I should do, pursuing a career I thought I should do, realizing that this is not what I want to do at all. This is not what I'd advise anyone to do, you know, to just quit your job, rather go to Andrea or Anja beforehand to do that and, and figure out a path to actually do it. But for me, it felt as if I don't get out of here right now, right at this moment, I might never get out. So I handed in my resignation, started my own self-development journey in 2019, hadn't heard about limiting beliefs before, which is also what I tell people when they try to sell their coaching services, because now today I help other people to build coaching and consulting businesses. I said, you can't use the language you're talking now after your own kind of like uh, transformation. You need to talk the language of the people that you want to help. If someone would have come to me back then and said, hey, Josephine, you don't dare to do this because of all your limiting beliefs, I would have said, are you nuts? I know exactly what I'm doing. So kind of like you need to go back and talk the languages that you, that you, um, that you did or that your ideal clients did before. And I know that everyone wants to start their business, but independently of what happens, when you pivot, when things change, you will change with it and you will there will be so many things possible that you didn't even know were possible before so when i quit my job i said i want to write a book i want to have a podcast i want to i want to i want to but i don't have a story because i didn't believe in myself and i think everyone has a story we all have a story we are here today sharing our stories and just by daring sharing your story you will inspire others and you only need to be a couple of steps ahead of anyone else. And then you can start building based on that. And if I can have one learning, I actually wanted to save this for the five, you know, the five bullet thing is, but I'll, I'll just be <laughs> really now. If I have, if I would have known back then that it only takes for me to be one step ahead of someone that I want to help. And if I really truly believe that, everything would be so much different and you don't need a huge audience you don't need a huge kind of like social media presence to be successful but start building today because tomorrow we don't we don't know what happens tomorrow by the way i also had a tumor i didn't know that back then i think as, as since i was kind of like so far along in my own self-development journey it was so much easier for me to after the surgery, after everything was all clear, it was so much easier for me to continue going. But if I hadn't known back then, or if I hadn't started my journey, it would have been so much harder. So thank you all so much for listening to us today. And I'm going to hand over to back to Andrea, who is our fantastic moderator today. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Thank you, Josephine. And thank you for mentioning about the comments. Absolutely. And there will be a time for questions. So and if something really resonates with you, we love we love to hear that because that we know, love to know it's really, really landing. And Josephine, I mean, I think your story is so powerful. Um, I mean, obviously, I've heard it, heard it, we've shared it before, but just that moment when your dad, it's like, we have one life, you know, and I think we kid ourselves for a really long time. Uh, I mean, I plan on living to well over 100. I've already made that decision. But we do, we think, oh, one day. And I, I, I don't know if you all notice this, but time is flying. I mean, we're we're in September of 2023. This year is almost over. And I think there's always this notion of one day. That one day, we can keep doing that for 10, 20, 30 years. And so for you, like when you reach that moment, you just said, like, I, you watched your dad and just like, no, this, this isn't one day. 
this this absolutely has to be this moment of now. And I think that's so, so powerful when you have that realization, like this is one life, it's mine. And I can spend the rest of my life trying to please everybody else, trying to make everybody else happy. Or I can choose to take control of my life. And, you know, the irony is, and I think this is one thing I think probably you can all relate to, is when you actually step into your power and you put yourself first, which us as women, we're really taught to put others first. So this can be really challenging. It can have to create that inner turmoil, right? But when we actually put ourselves first, the irony is the rest of the people around us actually benefit. Like, look at all the people that you guys are affecting in such a beautiful and positive way. You never would have been able doing that. You know, Josephine being executive at a bank. Like, <laughs> just, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you had a very successful career and I'm sure you did positively impact people, but not to the degree and not the level. And with that level of heart, which I know your heart is so big and authenticity that you were able to do that now. It's just a whole different level. It's just a completely different level. So I think that's one thing that women, we need to, to really acknowledge that when we actually step onto our power, we all rise up. And this is what we're trying to do in this group here as well. Like we're all stepping into our power. We want to help rise, you know, everybody and help everybody raise up. So thank you so much, Josephine. All right, Angela, take her away, girl. Hey. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, for hosting today. And uh, yeah, anybody who's in the comments, please. It's really cool. Good. We, I'm looking at these like four beautiful women in front of me, but we also see the comments right next to us. So definitely, uh, even if you give us a hey, something that resonates, um, Mary Beth, yes, we've all self-sabotaged in one way, shape or another. Um, it is a common thread when your soul knows you need to do something. So, okay. I'm Angela DeMarco. I'm from New York. I will talk as quickly as possible um, to get my story out there. But um, I just want to say my whole, it, it, my whole thing was it wasn't like a, um, I was forced out of, of my career shift. I basically was another person before I had um, a spiritual awakening and I became something else. Now, if I stayed in my career, I still would be that different person. So when we talk about um, pivoting and career shifts and things like that, it could happen from one job to another. It doesn't mean you have to jump ship, start a business, <laughs> crash and burn everything around you. Um, so um, my whole life, I grew up, I grew up in, uh, in advertising. I'm a graphic designer, art director, creative director, technology nerd, you know, that, that was my role. Um, but really, I always believed that I was like a number two, like I was a great number two. And I'm not talking about food. I was, um, <laughs> sorry, Dana and I have potty mouth. Um, I uh, always thought I was like the great vice president, you know, the, the person I could never be the one to take the lead. And I've always been somewhat of a visionary. I've always had my heart was like, you know, I'd play guitar and imagine I was the rock star, but I was the band aid not the person on the stage. You know, I never believed I was worthy of, of taking my shot. And um, in, on December 3rd, 2019, I lost a baby. That's uh, my little Joshua behind me in the painting with my other kids. And um, it was hands down the most excruciating experience of my life. And what it did was it set me on a journey to figure out what the purpose was to all of this. What was the purpose to that experience? Because everything, everything has a purpose. So what was the purpose to that experience? And little Joshua has led me on an amazing journey of a, a spiritual awakening just to kind of figure out what my purpose was. And uh, he led me to Dana. Dana here painted that painting for me. And, uh, and I had, had this idea for this business. Um, but I still had my nine to five job or, or eight to four, <laughs> as it was, uh, working for a, a great manufacturing company, cushy job, six figures, all that good stuff. Um, so I lost Josh, met up with Dana, came up with this idea for business and worked on it on the side. You know, like you just had to take those baby steps if you want to get started. But I, I but did the URL, I created a little logo, started writing a business plan, and it just evolved over a, a year. It was just brewing. Um, but what happened was like the, the main pivot point for me 
um, was that one, I no longer resonated with the job I was in because I was working for somebody else. It wasn't a passion. My heart wasn't in it, you know, as much as I loved doing the work and I loved the people. And I had so much um, effect on the company, which was so satisfying, but I didn't have a uh, passion for it. And I realized how important having passion is, you know, and following through. So in September of um, 2021, my daughter's um, friend killed himself. And uh, there was another girl who got murdered in our town in, in COVID. And it was just too much. It was just too heavy to be in a job where I had no passion. I, I had to quit. My husband and I were on the verge of buying a house. So I waited till we bought the house. And I turned to him and I'm like, hey, <laughs> I got to quit. So I, um, I then, I, I, I did it respectfully. You know, I had some money in the bank. I had, um, I gave them five or six weeks notice. I, I did all the things to help with the transition be as smooth as possible. Um, and I have no regrets, no regrets at all about it. My life today is that every single day I am living with purpose. Every single day I am living with a passion. And as hard as it is, sometimes there's the struggle. Dana and I used to joke like, all we wanna do is buy bananas for our family. And, uh, you know, getting through those tough times, I wouldn't trade it to the day where I was just going through the motions, living in a gray world. You know, my world is so full of color. Um, and, uh, and I'll save my tip for, for when we do our little rapid fire thing. But this is great. You guys are great. I'm so glad to everybody who's joining us. I love this troop of women. Look at these faces. They're so shiny and gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you so much, Angela. You know, and I think what was you know we all have the different stories but i think what's so interesting about yours is you like you said there wasn't anything awful about your job like it wasn't like you were in this place where it was really awful and you know having those moments where you realize you're you're done it's just time for a change it looks so different it doesn't have to be horrid it's just there's a part of you that says this isn't it this there's just there's there's more out there somewhere you know, and then you had the external circumstances highlight, you know, something similar to what Josephine went through. It's like, life is short. We, we get one, we get one kick at that in this lifetime. I mean, it's, it's up to us, each and every one of us. What I also think was really important was you talked about like two different people. Um, and I'm going to share my story next. And that's definitely how, how I felt. I'm like, there was this person at work and there was this person in my personal life and they were two different people. You know, I mean, we all show up differently in different scenarios. Um, and how exhausting scenarios. that is, right? How exhausting it is to hold up two personas. Please, seriously, take a break, be yourself, just <laughs> drop it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I agree. And uh, thank you so much for sharing about, um, you know, what happened with your miscarriage. That's um, I actually didn't know that. So. Thank you for sharing that. I know I can only imagine what that was like. And that would definitely bring you to that moment of like, why is this all happening? It's often those moments of tragedy where we go, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, and you know, when I talked in the beginning about where we're at right now in this world, that's what COVID did. That was the gift of COVID. I mean, there's a lot of tragedy that happened 100% and not, not to gloss over any of that. But tragedy and trauma has this way of giving us the, the opportunity to say, hey, life is short. What do I want to do with this? And, it has and this just, ability. Yeah, just to that point really quick, um, yeah. so I want to hear your story too. But um, in those moments when we go through a trauma or a tragedy, we have two options. We can dwell in it or we can transmute it. Joshua is my angel. He is with us. He, my kids talk about him like he's our brother. He's just not physically here with us. He has been our guiding spirit and our light. And we turned that that excruciating tragedy into something beautiful. And he's here. Oh, he's here. He's saying hi. He is here. I can feel it too. Oh my gosh, you're going to make me cry, girl. Okay. He is here. I love that. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. Okay. So as I said, I am Andrea Horvath. I'm in uh, Vancouver, Canada. Um, I'm going to pull my story back to about 2010, 2011. Um, I had just gone through um, a few years of a lot of change in my life, a lot of turmoil. 
Um, I had uh, my youngest daughter was born the first couple years of her life. She was ill. I spent two years trying to figure out what was wrong with her. Um, shortly after that, my marriage broke down. Um, well, during that process, I got divorced and then I divorced my family. So it was in around that time. Here I was, a single parent with two small kids um, working full time. I was a certified professional accountant. I had my kids 80 to 100% of the time. And I was just going through a number of years of really a lot of turmoil and trying to heal from everything that happened. So I was in survival mode and I made a decision at that moment. I said, okay, well, my life is not where I wanted it to be. It's up to me to actually change it. It's, it's, no one's going to come save me. You know, and I think to that point, I thought there was something outside that was always going to save me, but I'm like, no girl, it's you, <laughs> you alone have to do this. And not in a disempowered way, like I'm alone, but I have the power to change. So the next number of years, I dove heavily into personal development. I mean, I really didn't have a personal life, a social life, anything as it was kids. Work, working in a career I knew now did not suit me at all. Um, and personal development, every chance I got, I soaked up um, learning. I mean, I was driving to work, listening to Tony Robbins. I was kids going to bed. I was reading books. Um, going to seminars, going to programs, and you name it. In there also, uh, spiritual awakening. Of course, you don't usually know it when you're in it. It's usually not until you go back and you go, that's what that was. <laughs> and so eventually I realized, and through all this work, that I wanted to be a coach. So 2017, I took a year-long coaching program. And I started coaching on the side. And my job was getting harder and harder to be in. Like, as I think all of you could a test. I'm not sorry, all of you actually. I mean, I think certainly Dana, I mean, I think you talked about that getting harder and harder. And that's how it was for me. It was getting harder and harder. I didn't fit. I had to be the separate person there. It wasn't comfortable. It got more stressful. But I was scared. I mean, I've been a single mom. I had 100% custody of my kids. I've got a mortgage. I've got a house. Like, how am I going to leave a six figure job? Even though I freaking hated it. And it was like, it was just, I use the word soul sucking, but that's honestly how it felt. It felt like a little bit of me was dying each day here, but I was really scared. Um, and as a CPA in finance, there were a number of times in my career where I thought I, I could be fired because there was, you know, when you work in the world of finance, finance there's, there's often little gray areas that, you know, people try to take some liberties with. And I'm really, I'm really clear on my integrity and my ethics. So I thought there was a few times I could have been fired. And uh, there came a day where another situation came up at work and it was like, I think, I think I'm going to be fired. They asked me to do something and I'm like, I, I can't do it. And I knew, I knew deep in my soul, this is it. I'm going to be fired. And I've actually never told this story. It's like I'm getting emotional because I've actually never told this story before um, in public. Um, I heard a voice. I heard a voice in my head that said, we knew you were going to move. So we're doing this for you because, and I don't know who the we was. I've always thought we is a, my team of angels. I don't really know who we is. Dana's one of your thumbs up. Um, but it was a voice that said, we're doing this for you. This is not happening to you. It's happening for you because the universe, God, whatever you believe, knew there was no way in this world I was going to do what they asked me. So within a matter of, you know, three weeks, this all unfolded. I was fired as sure as, you know, as sure as I was, it was going to happen. I was fired. But that was my moment, you know, and I mean, I was really scared. My situation as, you know, different from all of us. I didn't have a partner. Um, but I also knew in that moment that if it was happening that way, for it to happen this way, I was going to be supported because I knew, I knew if it's breaking down, it's because it's meant to break down. This is not happening um, to tear me down. It's happening actually for me. And again, I had that message. So, okay. So I'm like, okay, hey, well, here I am. I have no income. I got zero severance, not a penny. They let me go. Boom. After 11 years, gone. And so, I mean, I hired a coach right away. I mean, like, I can't do this alone. Having this awareness, you, you can't do it alone. It's just, you're entering a whole new world. How do you navigate this whole new world, right? There's things I didn't know. You know, Josephine, you talk about mindset, 
all these different pieces that, you know, and I didn't have the luxury of time. I didn't have five years to figure this out. I had a mortgage to pay. So, so I did that. And, you know, what I can really say is it's been the most amazing ride. There are things I've done I never thought I would do. Like I'll take today, for example. <laughs> I mean, I never saw myself doing this. It's just, it was just me on a live with four other freaking badass women telling our stories. There's no way I would have ever thought this. I've done things that I never thought I could do. And that's one of the things is when you're actually yourself, you all of a sudden realize like all that stuff I thought I couldn't do, that was just a story. And that's because we had so many, you know, so many fears. So things I couldn't do, um, I thought I couldn't do, I've absolutely done. But when I really, really was really thinking about like today's live and what I really wanted to share is it's like coming home to you. That's the best way I can describe it. Because like I said, there was the work me and there was the personal Andrea. And now they're completely congruent. I am one person showing up and you're right, Angela, like it's, you realize, you don't realize it at the time, how freaking exhausting it is being two different people. And unfortunately, the corporate world that we have right now and not every company, I don't want to you know, paint a brush across it because that's not how it is. But so much of that world is this fake persona that we have to be somebody different. We put on these different clothes too, put on suits and we, you know, we can't do this and we can say this and it's exhausting. And then when you get to the side, it's like, wow, this is, this is easier. And, and it's not to say there's not challenges. Of course there are. It's life. I mean, we're humans. Part of the human experience is to have challenges and to overcome them. But being yourself and for me coming home to me has been honestly the greatest gift and i personally believe that's the greatest gift we can actually give each you know give ourselves is honoring ourselves being ourselves truthfully and showing up as you know who we really are in this world going hey world this is me i mean i never would have attracted you amazing ladies in my life i wouldn't be connected to all of you who are watching this today if I was still a CPA in the corporate world, you know, so they, they've done me a gift. They've, you know, gratitude only looking back. Um, and I don't know about the rest of you. I'd love to hear what you, you to say, but it feels like it's a lifetime ago. It doesn't even feel like it's me anymore. It's this whole different, you know, the title U2.0 because the 1.0 doesn't even exist anymore. It's like, this was a different reality completely. So, you know, I just had to say real quick, Dean, sorry. Um, when I was going through like inviting people to this thing, I was going through my list and I'm like, oh, there's that person from my path. Oh my gosh, there's that person. And there was a point in time where I kind of like, I wasn't on LinkedIn. I it was so full because I did advertising in New York City. Then I did my own business. Then I was the corporate world that, you know, so it felt like a lifetime ago, but I'm like, wow, these people don't even know me. They don't even know me. So, hey, hey, new, hey, old friends that are new. <laughs> but it's like, I'm a totally different person. And it's crazy. It's almost like I want to reintroduce myself as like yeah. who I am now, right? <laughs> Anya, go ahead. Yeah. You look like you're dying exactly. to say something. Absolutely. Go no, ahead. No, it's just, um, yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, all the stories, you know, that we just shared, we definitely have a lot of things in common because we were all also in like our old life. We were really successful. We were successful, you know, yeah. it wasn't like something was wrong. It's just like our soul started to, you know, coming out like the, like our soul wanted to be free. And yeah, there were like, you know, I would say like breaking points or whatever, like this events, you know, that, that helped to that process, yeah. of course. But what I also wanted to say is like, I had a feeling like all my life, I really liked what, when, when you said, you know, that you were like this, um, Angela, that you were um, an average, yeah, or, or like the second runner or something, runner up, yeah. And I was always average three, always. I was never, you know, like 10 because it was like, somewhere in between you know like on scale you have a one to five yeah i was always three so basically everything what i did even though i was successful and you know when i was working in corporate job or whatever i was successful but i was never good enough never 
Every single person in my life was giving me this feeling. You are not good enough. You need to, you, you need to be this, 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 you know, so you can get this, this, and this. And then I just said, you know what? You, you know, <laughs> sorry. No, I'm not going to accept that anymore. You cannot tell me like, if I'm good enough or no. So then, you know, I, I made a tattoo. I have, I'm enough. And like in all this transformation, but seriously, like when I started, like at the beginning of my spiritual awakening journey, of course, I thought that, yeah, I have it figured out now, but because of my subconscious, I was still attracting people who were giving me such a very, you know, like very difficult, very, very interesting, challenging lessons. Uh, and then of course, you know, through these lessons, then I, I started, no, I, you know, even though I'm, at the bottom, I'm not going to sell my soul again. I'm not yeah. going to sell my soul. And when you do that, when you like, you have absolutely nothing, but you say, you know what? I'm not going to sell my soul. I know everything is going to be fine. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know when, but, <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be okay. And about the voice, you know, that you mentioned as well, um, Andrea, I had that voice just before, I finished, I actually finished relationship with my ex-partner because we were in a relationship for like 10 years and it was not a good relationship. And I didn't know that. I really didn't know that because I wasn't aware what was happening. You know, I wasn't aware that I was in a relationship with a narcissist. I, I mean, you know, some kind of like, yeah, person who was really not appreciating you. But then my voice, like it was, I think it was one day before my 38th birthday because i'm 40 i know that i look younger but i'm 40 <laughs> and my um my the voice in my head just said how many times do you want to wake up on your birthday and feel less than trash and i was like never again so that was that was really really powerful for me it was hard because after that you know and after the conversation and all the action that i made like really it absolutely changed everything but i just want to say to every single person like it doesn't matter if it's woman or a man or you know you can make that change you can yeah. make that change because you are not alone in this world and if you don't know what to do just listen to stories like that you cannot copy paste the solution but we get you. We yeah. know the feeling. Yeah. We know the feeling. And we understand you. And you always have someone to talk to. I didn't have. Because I didn't, I didn't know how to say. Like all the world around me, they thought that I'm absolutely crazy. You know, I'm leaving everything behind. And exactly, and Anya. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why I think we're all so passionate about this. Because we all kind of went through it alone uh, in many ways. And and. And given there's more and more people now in this world who are in the same position who are because of the events, you know, everything that's going on, it's like, you don't have to do this alone. And yes, it's going to be your own recipe. It's going to be your own way, but there's actually tools. There's things, there's people who have done this, who can actually support and guide along the way. And, you know, I think another thing you said is really important was a lot of what you said was important on you, but when you're in the wrong place, you will never feel like you're enough like full stop. You're in the wrong place. And we know this in relationships, you know, it doesn't matter what area of our life you're with the wrong person. I mean, I know Angela, you did a post this morning about this. It's so true. If you're not around your people in the right place, doing the right things. And, and I wrote a comment. I said, I could be doing bat flips in my kitchen, cooking dinner and stilettos and people will still not value me and think I'm amazing. It's the truth. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I, I just, as you guys were talking about the voice and about, you know, the, the tipping point of, you know, not being appreciated. I just had a memory that I had completely forgotten about one of the, the tipping points for me when I, when I, in that year or so, when I was leaving my school is there was a woman who had a reputation as a teacher for being a C plus at best. If anything, I was always going in and fixing her messes because the kids would have issues because she wasn't properly teaching them. So I'm essentially teaching this woman how to teach the students. And that year, the year before I freaked out, <laughs> but that year she got an award teacher of the year award. 
And I had been there 16 years and I had never gotten the award. And I always chalked it up to, well, you know, I'm not part of the, the religion. I'm not part of the community, you know, and she got this award. And in that moment, I was like, I was like, there is nothing that I can do to be seen here. There is nothing. When this, and I remember I didn't go to the ceremony. I was a little bit feistier. I mean, I'm feisty now, but I was like feistier. I, I wouldn't even go to the ceremony. And I told the head of school, the new head of school, I said, I am not going for this reason. When the hypocrisy is so great that you're giving this woman an award to, to either shut her up or throw a couple bucks in her pocket when the rest of us are, you know what I mean, juggling and spitting fire. It was such, it was, it was such a turnoff. But when I look back now, I'm like, in so many areas of my life, there was a lack of appreciation. So what do we do usually, especially women, we double down, we work harder, we're going to prove our worth. And when we, when we realize, I don't have to prove shit to you, I am worthy just because I'm awesome, and then find our people to align with, it looks like this, it looks like this, I'll call it a room, but this room of five people, we all have the same story, we all have the same feelings, we all have the same takeaway in one way or another. Find your people, people. I can't stress it enough. If you're not appreciated, it's not you, you're not with the right people, period. Bless you, Tina. That is so <laughs> and we all have this need to be seen, heard, and understood. There's a of human course. need for that. And so that's part of what the nudge is, is when you don't feel like you're seen, heard, and understood for who you are, it's going to create that turmoil, that feeling inside you that you're never enough. And you're so right. We double down and we hustle harder. We, yeah, I'm going to prove to you how great I am. Listen, you get to prove energy. Through shit. Yeah. The prove energy. You have burnout and burnout and burnout yeah. and burnout. You're still not good enough. You're still it, not good enough. 100%. And I see this with women all the time. And so they come to me and they're, and they're burned out and they're exhausted. They're like, well, I don't even have the energy to make a change now. And it's like, and they're so, so, so defeated. And it's like, we need to get people before they're there, right? We need to start seeing it and recognizing it for what it is. It's not time to double down. That's in fact the opposite of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to step back, lean out and go, what's really going on here? What's the yeah. bigger picture? Yep. And then start to take action based on that before we get to that place of complete burnout and exhaustion. So I'm just reading some of the comments here. I'm going to read a few of them out loud just here. Anybody have any questions too? Because we're getting close to the end of the hour here. Can I just um, add, a, a, yes. a, just a, because I think we've, we've all had like wake up calls one way or the other. And when you're in a certain situation, like Anya was in this narcissistic relationship where I was in a very toxic uh, environment, we, you don't, as, as Anya said, you don't see that. You don't realize that until you're out of that environment. But as Dana got all these signs, I also got all these signs. I wasn't promoted or I was changing jobs internally. And and in the end, it's not, it's like, you know, when you, these breakup scenes in a movie, it's not you, it's me. Because that's the, the thing, right? It's exactly what Andrea said. It's not, they can't do it. There is no prince or princess coming to save us or save you. You have to do this. And if you don't do it, if you don't listen to these signs that come up, that someone else gets the award, someone else gets the, uh, gets the promotion, someone else gets whatever it might be, you will have your wake up call. And that might be a burnout. That might be that you'll get fired. That might be that you lose someone very close to you like Angela and I did. The wake up call is real because it is, if you're in spiritual or not, I wasn't very, when I was in corporate, I was like, I don't believe in that stuff. But I kind of like tend to start believing that the universe has a way of giving us a big kick in the ass if we're not doing the things, right? Yep. So it's do it and don't be afraid of, don't be afraid of doing it because that is also what, what will everyone else say? What will everyone else say? We don't give a rat's ass what everyone else is saying. <laughs> yeah, Joseph. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't. No, no rat's ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so sorry, I just no. wanted to give that little rant. And now, Andrea, please read the no, comments that was... because I love the, the comments. Thank you so much. That, that was perfect. And you're right. Those are all wake up calls. And like I said, the, the universe, life, whatever you want to call it, starts to take away things and, and pull things apart to get your attention to go. It's a wake up call. You're out of alignment. You're heading down a wrong path. Get it together, girl. Like, and it's up to you. And that was beautifully said. I'm so sorry. I do want to read a few comments here. Um, 
complete burnout broken and has become a shell of a person. Yeah, in my corporate role, I, I get it. So true, healing from crashing and burning takes a lot. It really does. It's And it is a healing journey. Um, don't double down. Yep. Awesome. Glad to hear that that resonated. Um, somebody with some information on narcissists. I think a lot of us have had to do, do mm -hmm. that. Um, coming home to myself. Absolutely coming home to me. So if anybody has any questions before we go into rapid fire, although this has all felt like rapid fire in some ways. <laughs> um, Okay, so I don't, I don't think I see any questions here. Um, before we do our rapid fire, but what I want to say just before we do that is, first of all, we're all here on LinkedIn. Obviously, we've connected with you all on here. And if you're not connected with us, like reach out, like connect with us, send us a message. We'd love to hear your takeaways, continue the conversation. This is not just a one-off. We're coming on here just to do this. I mean, we really, all of us truly deep in our heart and our souls, we want to help elevate, empower inspire do do all of these things so don't just kind of go away like and like i said connect with us we'd love to all hear from you i know you know we've got different people who know different people on here so absolutely do that second thing i want to say is we want to inspire you into action right it's great to sit here and talk about this but what can you do take there's something really powerful if you take the energy from this live here today and actually leverage it do something in your life, take one step, but do, you have to do it quickly, like 24 to 48 hours, one step. I don't mean a giant leap for you. It might be talking to having a conversation with your spouse about maybe I need to make a change. Maybe it's getting a book that you want to, maybe it's, you know, hiring a coach, hiring a counselor, hiring a something, right? Some step to actually take yourself for it because that's what it begins with. It's one step, one foot in front of the other <laughs> isn't there a song like that somewhere out there? <laughs> do it right. now yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just thinking about that one Anya. yeah you don't want us singing so we're just going to quit that little line right there right <laughs> um so let's do rapid fire on to go ahead 60 seconds or less what is the one thing you'd love to tell uh anybody who's watching yeah just use non-jar concept that is non-judgment non-attachment and non-resistant so basically non-judgment non-attachment and non-resistance when you will implement that in your life it's gonna become magical yeah. everything because if you are attached too much on past on people on things on situations it's gonna be so painful when everything changes so you just keep it keep flowing you know you are you are you are a fluid person you are an energetic being with unlimited power to create and uh yeah we are here to just gain experiences and to have fun for god's sake <laughs> everything is so <laughs> serious just have fun and now when i have my hr agency i try to tell people i don't want to work anymore any like not even a day i just want to create and have fun and work should be creating and having fun it's not right. work it's not job it's not slavery <laughs> just <laughs> have fun with it all right Yay. Dana, go you're up girl okay so i as we were talking i was writing down nugs so i have more than one so i'll talk fast uh first is ignore your critics no, whoever's telling you what to do, don't listen to them unless they're in the trenches with you. I always say, if they're not burying the body with you, don't tell me how to hold the shovel. That's the one. <laughs> Cater to your strengths. We all are born with these gifts. We're gifted. Follow those strengths. They will take you where you need to go. Pivot. It's not a failure. When something isn't working out well, just shift it. But it doesn't mean you have to abandon it completely. Uh, let You have to let go of the old to embrace the new. As you change, you'll see you will no longer align with a lot of that's in your life. Let it go, man. It doesn't serve you. Find your people. Self-explanatory. <laughs> and every moment now is a little awesome nugget of now. Enjoy the now. And when you start stringing those nows together, they get you exactly where you want to go. And how do you do that? You follow the joy, man. If it feels good, do it and keep doing more things like that. Sorry if that was over 60 seconds. I'm back to me. <laughs> All right, Josephine, you're up. 
So I'm going to give you some statistics. And just by writing down your goals, you increase the, um, the po possibility of it coming true, true with 42%. That's super low hanging fruit. Just write it down what it is that you want. It can be really crazy. Also, if you tell us about it, if you write it in the comments here, if you tell someone like us about it in, in a DM, for example, it increases to 65% just by sharing that dream you have with someone. If you even have an accountability partner, like you have someone who's holding you accountable, it can even be a friend, it increases to 95%. Your dreams will come true with 95% if you have an accountability partner. And start with a small step. It can be sending a DM, sending us a connect request. That are small steps that might change the rest of your life. It doesn't have to be a big step. Rather take the small step. Thank you. Awesome, Angela. Oh my God, where's my pen? <laughs> so good. Um, okay, mine is going to be um, super simple. Um, you have everything you need to do what you need to do. All you have to do is sit in quiet and listen to your inner voice, listen to your heart, listen to, listen to what yourself is saying. If you're feeling uncomfortable in a situation at work, quiet, why? Is it the person? Is it the place? Is it the thing? Figure out what that is. Before you go and address it, before you go run and get the, the new husband or the new job or the new thing, really think about what it is that is making you feel discontent. Really listen and let your inner voice guide you and connect with us, connect with each other. I mean, see you guys in the comments, it's so great. You're talking to each other. Like, let's all... It, it, it's like Josephine said, it's a conversation that can happen and that conversation can change your trajectory. So just sit in quiet, listen. If I knew this a long time ago, my life would have been a lot more peaceful. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Angela. So, so mine would be um, all the stuff, all the stories that you have going on in your head about what could go wrong and what's gonna happen when you go through this you look back and you're like, what was I ever worried about? Like, honestly, you look back, I look back and I just go, you know what? All those things just don't matter. So look at the stories that you're telling yourself, who you're giving your power away to, what you're giving your power away to. And we kind of let those stories go because really your future reality is not created by the stories of your past. They are really determine your future is in this moment of now decision you make right now, the person you are right now determines everything moving forward and the other stuff just will not matter like we've talked about it's like it's a whole different life before you can't even relate to it anymore you're like what was I all worked up about second thing is you're doing this do some things strategically like planning wise like Dana talks about like you know she waited a year okay maybe she didn't want to wait a year but you know look at your situation look at your finances look at all those things and just do some smart planning and actually be aware of your entire financial situation and your situation overall, because that will empower you. Sometimes we think it's worse than what it really is. We make up a story in our head again, of what's going to go wrong and all the horrible things that are going to happen. You know what? Say you have to sell something in your house. Who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's or like, sell I, I, your house, Andrea. I'm sorry. I sold 100%. my house. 100%. <laughs> and Dana, you know, it's a really good point. Like when I did this, I said to my kids, I said, okay, kids, I'm doing this. I know I'm going to get fired. I'm okay to sell if I have to sell this house. And I said, I need to know you guys know that's on the table. And they went, yes, mom. Oh, I'm going to cry right now. And they're like, yes, mom, we support you. Like I didn't really quote, unquote, need their support. But you got to really look. Do you want to be happy or not? That's kind of basically what it comes down to. And let the rest go. Like, honestly, just you've got to at some point let all those stories go. So we are 10 through. I am personally amazed that we've kept this to the time that we said that we would, ladies. <laughs> So again, I just want to reiterate, and I'm going to go back and read all those comments more. I've gone through as we've gone through this, but I love to see that engagement connecting with each other. And like we all have said, if, you're, if your next step is literally connecting with one of us, I mean, we would love to hear from all of you yeah, in truth. Yeah, definitely. Because we do. We all 100% rise together. And who knows, maybe we can start doing this a little more often, ladies. <laughs> Yeah. If that's something you guys want, let us know. I would know. love that. <laughs> yeah. Boot to the hell out but, of it. But <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys are watching, going, you love to have, I don't know, monthly installments, something like that, quarterly installments, I don't know, of the five of us, <laughs> let us know. And um, yeah, we can see if we can make that work. So, um, And, and, and Andrea, real quick to that point, 
this came from connection requests. This came from commenting on each other's stuff. So you guys have no idea where this yeah. could lead to. So just, yeah. Yeah, this was all That's very organic. We connected just with each other. It was yes. Just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. As I said, replay will be available um, on my profile. will automatically, and I'm sure we'll all share it out there. So um, yeah, hope you've all enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> That's New York. <laughs>